What does our world tell us about hair? From fairy tales to advertisements, movies and music videos, our icons are typically lusciously locked. Long flowing hair has been a powerful marker of being a woman. But that's not how Afro-textured hair grows. Our hair generally grows upward and is tightly coiled, like this and like this. So what does our world tell us about Afro hair? Black students at the prestigious Pretoria High School for Girls protested a clause that banned wide cornrows, braids and dreadlocks. There's an online petition demanding <laughs> that Beyonce and Jay-Z do something about their daughter, Blue Ivy's hair. One commentator said, quote, no child whose mom spends thousands on her hair monthly should live life looking like a sheep. Right now, school administrators say the girl's hair is a problem and it needs to be straightened or she'll get kicked out. But her mom doesn't understand how her hair looking like this is wrong. Mystic Valley Regional Charter School says the two sophomore students' hair extensions violates its dress code. So they're being disciplined with detention and are prohibited from taking part in extracurricular activities. Mainstream beauty doesn't have black women in mind. Instead, black women with Afro hair are expected to conform to an aesthetic that values straight hair. That desire for straight hair is a construct that started during colonization. Let me explain. From my earliest memories, my hair was presented as a problem that needed to be managed. The concept of leaving my hair the way it grew from my head was crazy to me. From weaves to extensions, jerry curls, curly perms, straight perms and straighteners, my hair was hidden. It was misunderstood, it was damaged, it was broken and it was completely unloved. That's not surprising. I never saw anybody with hair like mine. Afro-textured hair was, and in many places is, stigmatized to the point of taboo. But it wasn't always this way. In the mid-1400s, Alvise Cadamosto made two trips to Africa. In his journal, he wrote this about the people in West Africa. Both sexes go barefooted and have no coverings to their heads and weave and tie their hair, though short, into neat tresses. Neat tresses. Cadamosto's accounts were positive, partially because transatlantic enslavement didn't exist yet. There was no imperative to dehumanize Africans. To European observers, there is no sense of African hair being ugly or inferior. We see a similar sentiment in Yoruba proverbs. And the Mende described beautiful hair with the word potongo, which means it is much, abundant, plentiful. In reference to hair, the root word poto means long and thick. What contributed to the major shift in black hair? Slavery. During slavery, the hair of black people was compared to animals. It was claimed that the tightly coiled African hair was similar to the wool of an animal. That was a way to justify the inhumane exploitation of people During slavery, a hierarchy emerged where there was a status attached to having more European features. Those with these features, including looser textured hair, while still denied access to basic human rights, sometimes had more opportunity. This is a pattern that was apparent from the context of slavery through emancipation and even up until the present day. Slavery was abolished in 1865, but the stigma around black hair was not. 
After slavery, chemical hair straightening products for black people gained popularity. It was seen as one of the few avenues that could provide financial empowerment to black women at a time when those opportunities were practically non-existent. It was seen as a way to elevate their status, so they were marketed with an emphasis on beauty, personal success, and the uplift of the entire race. It led people to believe that their black hair wasn't beautiful the way it was. But a century after the abolition of slavery, black hair and the Afro reigned supreme again. The civil rights movement and the black power movement became a motivating force that disrupted European beauty standards. Some black American men and women began to move away from the relaxers and embrace the natural coils and curls that grew from their heads. Don't be ashamed of your heritage. Don't be ashamed of your color. Don't be ashamed of your hair. I am black and beautiful and not ashamed to say it. This era of empowerment was glorified everywhere, from local streets to TV shows such as The Jeffersons and on iconic figures such as Michael Jackson. Fast forward to today, and while black hair is still not widely accepted, it is being celebrated at events like Curlfest, in TV commercials, and it's even emerging on red carpets and runways. And then, in 2018, Black Panther was released. The release of the movie was monumental for many reasons. It was the first time a Hollywood production created an on-screen world populated almost entirely by women with type 4 hair. I embraced my natural hair as well. When I was pregnant with my first baby, I decided to shave my hair and go natural. I knew that if I had a daughter, it was crucial she did not grow up with the same warped concept of beauty that I did. So I'll leave with this. We need to reimagine the way we think about progress, about modernity, about success, about development, and about civilization. We need to think about the way we frame demands for inclusion and representation, and seriously rethink the way we attribute, or more often do not attribute, value to indigenous knowledge systems. And yes, we need to reject many of the beauty standards we subscribe to, those that privilege lighter skin, thinner noses or good hair. One of the easiest ways to demonstrate our nascent freedom? Wear our natural hair. So California is officially the first state to ban racial discrimination based on natural hairstyle. California became the first state to pass the Crown Act in 2019, aiming to ban race-based hair discrimination, and six other states followed suit. The natural hair movement is more than hair. It is a lifestyle. It is learning to be comfortable in the skin that you're in. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.